was simply it. Let, let's play that cut again on Tri City Sports now. Get involved with you saw he had nothing to do with Coach Fulmer. It didn't. I mean, it had to do with the fact that as a kid growing up, what the way I looked at UCLA basketball, and that was simply it. Well, forgive me if I am using a day-old uh, soundbite, but it has uh, actually been a little late in coming down the pike here. So, that's Rick Barnes talking a little bit about, uh, you know, there had been some concerns. Uh, some people had said, whoa, Barnes might not be happy at Tennessee. That sort of thing. Really, look, I'm going to say this a million times. I don't know what else to tell you. UCLA trumps Tennessee as a basketball program. Is anybody really going to debate anyone on this? If you do, you're a fool. And so UCLA comes a-calling. You take the call. Wow. I could be the coach of the school of John Wooden and Bill Walton and Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. And Ed O'Bannon, who I like a lot because I think he's sticking up for the college player and the use of their likeness. You know, it's insanity to me that, you know, they, oh, Ed O'Bannon doesn't want, uh, he wants to be paid for his likeness on the video game box. Do away with the video game box. It's insanity. Anyway. Oh, let's see here. We were talking a little bit. I wanted to get to the uh, hockey uh, playoffs here, and of course it was a disappointing 5-1 loss, as you mentioned in the opening segment, to the Dallas Stars, the series now even at two games apiece, and uh, we've got some quotes here from uh, some Dallas Stars, if you will, that I'd like to play and comment about, and this is uh, Jim Montgomery, the Stars head coach, talking to the media after Dallas beat Nashville 5-1. Uh, Matt's Zuccarello is showing he can be as dominant as anybody when he gets going. Um, let him get his hockey legs and, you know, all that. I mean, we're talking about a guy that's basically not, done nothing for two months, and now he, he's already producing like this. Like, I, I think in the month between January 20 at the All-Star break until we we got him, he was one of the top five scorers in the NHL in that span. So there's another level in him. It was Zuccarello who scored a goal. Uh, Pekka Rene only faced eight shots. He had been so good early on. And now he was, you know, pulled for UC Soros. And now we'll have that old question again. 87 straight playoff games Rene has started. Is that streak going to come to an end? And the reason why is because the Stars, they hit early they hit often four goals on the first eight shots, and, well, here's Montgomery talking about it. I thought it was two things. I thought it was Seggy's line and Jamie and Rats. Uh, I thought they started us really well. They were physical. They initiated, and then I thought our first power play set the tone. First power play? What do you think? Two goals on, two sh uh, on the first two times out with the man advantage. This after going one for 13 in the previous three games of the series. You would have thought the Stars were the Predators or something. Well, the series now tied at two games apiece. And let's see what we can uh, muster here. And as we look at uh, Montgomery talking a little bit about where the series stands right now. I just want to keep getting better and, uh, you know, I knew Bish was going to bounce back. It was nice to see the power play do it in, so, in such a dominant fashion. You know, It's nice for us to get the series back uh, even. Preds do have the home ice advantage. Okay. LaViolette will have the uh, last line change in two of the next three games if they need two, or if they need three games, if they get three games. Depends on what goes on. Because now a decision needs to be made in net. I'd stick with Renee, but uh, you know the fans are going to want Soros Saturday in Nashville. Ben Bishop, the Stars goalie, on the other hand. Stopped the puck. Crowd rebounds and broke the puck out. You know, like, 
He did what he's done for us all year long. 34 saves. Is that what it is? Yeah, 34 saves. A 5-1 victory for Ben Bishop and the Dallas Stars. And so the series is tied at two. That's playoff hockey. It'll make you nervous more times than not. Meanwhile, Peter Lavlielet had this to say about the loss. Uh, I don't know if discipline comes into shooting the puck out of the rink. Uh, those are those are accidental type of penalties. Uh, at home with a, one of his the second one a high stick. I don't think that's intentional. But we got to be in control of our sticks. We got to keep the pucks in the rink. So there's a couple that I think that we reacted out there, and we can't do that. And uh, obviously it cost us tonight. It hurt us. So discipline is definitely something that is on the plate. We've got to play a cleaner game. Did the Predators take the Stars for granted? Hmm. All right. Now, uh, in other NHL, if you, uh, well, should we say here, uh, if you missed it, we would, uh, let's look at this. Uh, the Boston Bruins defeated the Toronto ba Maple Leafs by the score of 6-4. to four. Mike Bob Babcock, excuse me, I'll get it. One of the better known coaches in the NHL had this to say about the Leafs loss to the Bruins. I thought we had good energy, and for periods of the game, I thought played really good, but too many turnovers in the first period, trying to play too high octane instead of just looking after the puck and playing right like we've been playing. So, uh, But I thought we had good energy. I think three of the four games we've had real good energy and did lots of good things. Just got in our own way a little bit here tonight. But it's not so much the energy as it is sometimes the strategy. Bruce Cassidy talks about the... Bruins' victory, and what they did to emerge victorious. Just moving some pieces around, hopefully it gives us a spark, maybe it makes them think, you never know, it might affect how they do things, I don't think it did, they just, you know, they're going to play their game, but at the end of the day, it, uh, we still got past the back with Bergie a little bit, uh, we knew we'd do that, certainly on the power play and a few five-on-five -five shifts, and it worked out today. So it's the Bruins and the Leafs that are also tied two games apiece. Meanwhile, out on the coast in a game that, well, maybe you missed. Oh, look out that pass out in front. And now brought up by Langan is gone. Here comes Langan is gone. For Soderbergh. Let the shoot. We don't need no stinking shootout. I like the shootout, as a matter of fact, but this time the uh, Avalanche did not need that against the Calgary Flames. So that series is tied at two games apiece. And this is what Miko Rantanen had to say after the 3-2 victory for the Lanch over the Flames. A couple of relocated teams from back in the day. It was a it was a team effort again, you know. We we went back again to to nothing, but we we fought back. And there's lots of belief in that team, you know. We we believe we can do it every night, and uh, uh, that's what we uh, we got it down tonight. Yeah, I never liked it that the Nordiques left. I always liked the announcements in French after a goal was scored. To tell you the truth, they were the only one that did. You could learn another language watching the Quebec Nordiques. I mean, it was great back in the day, and. Uh, Anyhow, the uh, Lancia 3-2 winner, and so that actually, I think what I said was that series was tied. With, this actually, forgive me, that was, uh, I am mistaken there. Colorado leads the best of seven series, three games to one. Don't count out the Flames yet, but it looks like another upset might be in the coffers. Is there any top-seeded team that could emerge victorious? Think about this. Of course, the Caps do lead the Hurricanes two games to one in the best of seven. The Golden Knights, they lead the Sharks three to one. Blues and Jets, they all play tonight. Seven o'clock is the face-off. 
for the Caps and the Hurricanes over in Raleigh in one of the many venues named after the PNC Bank. And then up in, what is it, Manitoba, that's where St. Louis and the Jets play. The winner of that series would play the Predators should the Predators get past the Stars, and that's a big maybe. And yeah, the Golden Knights are looking better and better and better as maybe again the team to beat out of the conference. What with the Flames struggling? The Predators, eh, who knows? Got Flurry hot, and they've picked up some scoring. So that's the hockey playoff rundown. Of course, uh, only two teams, a couple of us have uh, advanced so far. The Islanders swept the Penguins, and the Blue Jackets stunningly swept the top-seeded Lightning. 62 victories, and they're out. I'm not so sure that's a good upset. When we come back, the NFL schedule is out, and I'll be talking about it. Tri-City Sports Now.